with the bots closing in on our new democratic space station. Now, more than ever, we must work together to throw those clankers back into whatever abyss they crawled out of. That's why today I'll be sharing my top five tips for maintaining teamwork with random players against the bots, without using your voice. My name is Commissar Kai, and for this one I grabbed up three random helldivers from my Discord that I've never played with before, took them into a super helldive mission against the bots, and then deafened and muted myself to see if I could still support and lead my team using just my actions and my pings. We got a lot to go over today, so let's get after it. While we get set up, I do want to clarify that I am aware this ain't a perfect simulation of a quick play game, but it's the best I could do without buying the game again and making an alternate account. If you want to see some of these tips in action with truly random teammates, check out my earlier videos before I started making a name for myself and my platoon. Also, if I sound like I've been beaten with a stick, it's just because I feel like there's a dang bot behind my eye trying their very best to drill into my skull, but I'll keep taking super Tylenol until my head is liberated once again. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's start off with our First tip, number five, plan your loadout. The first step of becoming a good teammate starts on the ship while you're still picking your loadout. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to take a quick look at what your teammates are bringing to the fight and then build around it. In this example, we can see our whole team is just loaded with anti-tank ordnance. So we don't need to worry about a tank or a factory strider ruining on our day. But since our team's lugging around all the AT weapons and mostly AT stratagems, they might struggle if we get a big spawn of combat striders or lots of devastators. So those are the targets we're gonna build around. We'll be bringing the Laser cannon and explosive crossbow for general contact with the enemy. Thermite grenades is an insurance policy against tanks and striders. The orbital gas strike to confuse large groups of enemies and to give us a method of taking out detector towers. For those of you that aren't aware, if the shell of the gas strike hits a detector tower at treasonous thought station head on, it will destroy it. The orbital laser for quickly dealing with big fabricators, or as an oh crap button, with the buff to its damage, this thing shreds through bot hordes. And of course, the best stratagem in the game on bots, the HMG emplacement. This particular piece this kit is especially important for how we're going to be approaching team play since it's going to dictate whether we fight out a bot drop or relocate to a better position. But we'll go over all those details in a little bit. There's tons of ways you can adapt this particular loadout to your preference or a different situation. But the point is how we adapted it based on what we saw our team was bringing to the fight. The core idea we're working with though is to keep the hordes of motherless tin tyrants back while our team loaded up with all their big booms deals with anything heavier than a hulk. Putting some thought into your loadout before the mission starts can really help you come up with a plan of action for how you're going to play around your team. Trying to make a build that can do everything is still effective, but it also limits your options for how you're going to approach gameplay. For example, I could drop the HMG emplacement for 500kg or Eagle Rockets so I had an answer for tanks and striders when I'm on my own, but then I wouldn't be able to do this. By limiting my role to taking out things that are Hulk sized or smaller, I'm able to be far more effective at supporting my team and working together to get through the mission than if I ran off on my own with a just really good loadout. Playing like a solo scout or a demolition role can absolutely work if you're good enough with your mechanics and know how to keep yourself safe. And I'm sure I'll cover those roles again on my channel, but it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for error since you can easily collide with your expiration date and then get called in across the map with your, without your support weapon or your samples. You could also end up in a situation where your team is just getting their butts kicked and you run out of reinforcements, giving you an even smaller margin of error. But if you prefer playing this way, then that's totally fine. Not entirely sure why you clicked on team play video, but I'm glad you're here all the same. We love our sample goblins and stealthy saboteurs after all. Number two, using and reading body language. Helldivers can tell you a lot about their intentions by where they're standing and what they're shooting at. Like right here, I see E4 and T2 holding position, not shooting, and pinging something. That tells me they want to attack this bot outpost, but they might not have what they need to start the fireworks on their own. So I move up to support and toss down a resupply before making my way right up to the base and starting our attack. Since I know they'll likely want that resupply, I break to the right while they gear up. This puts me in an excellent position to flank the bots while my team pushes up that hill. This plan didn't require me to say nothing, but merely through my actions I was able to communicate my intentions. And you already do the same. You might just not be aware how your body language is influencing your fellow helldivers. But once you start paying attention to it, it becomes a whole lot easier to read 
read a situation and react accordingly. Here you can see that there are no teammates in front of me, and since no one's passed by me, that means at least two of my squad are pushing up that other entrance to this rundown bot trailer park. With that bot drop being called in, I know most of the attention will be on my teammates for now, so I can toss down my HMG emplacement in relative pace, especially after they pop that Strider turret, and let the bots know what getting turned into Swiss cheese feels like. If nothing else, I hope this proves to y'all why the HMG emplacement is the best stratagem in the game against bots. With just a little planning and watching what your teammates are doing, you can wipe out an entire bot drop with a single stratagem. Far as I know, there's nothing else in the game that can do that somewhat reliably, but the HMG emplacement? It can take care of business. When you watch your teammates with a bit of an open mind, sometimes you can even figure out why they're being stubborn and refusing to leave a bad situation. And maybe you're able to help them out of whatever bind they found themselves in so you don't gotta waste valuable reinforcement budgets on calling in fresh hell divers. Like here, we have just cleared out the super base and the only thing left to do is extract. So I make my way towards Xville, but I notice that two of my teammates are still fighting back at the outpost. So I zoomed in on their position and noticed that most of our samples are lying on the ground right in front of the outpost. Since I value my fellow Helldivers getting their ship upgrades, I double back to get them unstuck from their predicament. I could show y'all dozens more examples of reading body language from this game alone. And if you want to see more of that, let me know and maybe I'll consider making a full video on it. But for the sake of time, let's move on to our next tip. But first, if you've been liking watching me herd Helldivers around the map like a super sheepdog, then consider liking the video. That one click is the best way to support me and manage democracy by spreading the good word of cooperation and team play to the rest of the fleet. Find other Helldivers partial to working together, and listen to my platoon by joining the Discord linked in the description below. My commandos are the most active Helldivers in the fleet, and we're always happy to show an FNG the ropes. To see more content like this, subscribe to the channel for a new video every week. Now that I've done my duty, let's get back at it. Number three, plan your attacks. When you want to assault a position against the bots, planning your attack is far more important than it is on bugs. Clankers are most dangerous when they can hit you from multiple angles, which often happens when you're assaulting an objective like a fabricator or a radar station. Patrols can wander in while enemies on the objective can easily call in bot drops. Sometimes the terrain of a planet also don't allow for a ton of readily available cover while you approach. So when you go on the offensive against the clankers, include your team as factors in your plan of attack. Here you can see, after I'm done being blown up by this robo asshole, my team is assaulting the radar station while I'm holding back. I'm doing this because I know that a bot drop can get called in at any moment. At some point, a patrol will probably wander in while they're adjusting the radar and call in a swarm of rusted toasters to ruin our day. So to keep control over the situation, I'll be looking for those patrols and engaging them if they start the path towards my team. In this case, I want the bot drop to be called in, focused on me, since my team is off to the right and in a good amount of cover. Because of where they are relative to me, they're in the perfect position to flank an incoming drop if I'm the one that's got its attention. Since there's three hell divers in full cover ready to unload a ton of cease and decease orders on any incoming drops, I know I'm safe to engage whatever I want with my HMG emplacement before moving up to support them. Since this drop got called in at the only spot where I can't cover my team, I run up to assist. Now I know I don't have Vera since she's sitting back on the hill and my orbital lasers need to be saved for later in the mission. So I can only really provide support with my orbital gas strike and the weapons on my back. But I hope y'all notice the absolute deluge of stratagems coming out from my team at this drop. The reason they can do this is I bought them a whole lot of time to get their stratagems back by taking out all those patrols that were creeping up on their position. This drop quickly gets melted to scrap, but that 380 barrage and the meteor shower means it's time to run away. Unfortunately, two of my teammates were a bit too slow on the draw, so I reinforced them away from the blast zone. And the keen eyed among you you might have noticed this is also back towards Vera, so I can quickly sweep away any stragglers that managed to limp their way out of all that firepower. By planning out how I wanted to attack that position, I was able to allow my team to get their stratagems on the right targets and cover their retreat back to the high ground. Of course, I didn't know this is how it would play out, but I gave myself the tools through my positioning to handle any situation that might have come up. This skill might take some time to master, and it doesn't always work, but really just watching your teammates and playing around what they're doing makes it so much easier to plan things out. Since you're working with more intel and assets than you'd have on a solo run, even if those assets don't necessarily know they're being used as assets. Now that we've covered how to attack a position, let's look at our next team play tip. Number four, aggressive defense and defensive aggression. Defending a position against the bots is mainly about three things. 
good sight lines, available firepower, and cover. When you have all three of these factors in your favor, you can seriously take out an almost endless supply of scrap metal. But how you use these tools is going to depend on what you need to do in the moment. Like here, I see we've destroyed a stratagem jammer with a safe anti-air battery to our left and the primary objective to our right. Based on what I'm seeing here, I want to hold this position until all the clankers have been cleared out and we have a straight shot to those two objectives, especially the anti-air emplacement. From this vantage point, my team and I can see the bots from an incredible distance away. And if you pay attention, you can even see a few patrols spawning out of the blue in the distance. And what menses steal the best? especially when you have a good vantage point, the HMG emplacement. This is what I call aggressive defense. My team and I are coaxing the bots to a favorable position for ourselves so we can unload on them with reckless abandon. As you can see, as long as we're on this hill and they're not creeping up behind us, we can just keep slaughtering these communist metal bastards until they eventually run out of steam. Baiting your enemy into a bad position is one of the best ways to play defensively, since you can control the type and manner of the engagement. The bots, being stupid, will always meander towards you, making it easy easy to cover them in airstrikes and rip them to shreds with high caliber rounds. We've also prepared the ground with an early resupply so our team can keep chunking grenades and firing off those hard hitting AT weapons. Because we chose to fight at such a great position, the bots quickly give up and we're able to move towards the anti-air battery, which is right here, it wasn't in frame earlier. Before we move over to defensive aggression, I just wanted to show y'all exactly why I bring the explosive crossbow all the time right now. Take a look at this. We are able to take out an entire bot patrol of four rocket devastators and some trash in less time than it took me to say that. Three seconds. Using a primary weapon. This is great, but this is the only weapon in the game that feels a bit too strong. So don't burn down command if it gets adjusted. Hopefully they'll buff the plasma weapons up to match this thing instead, but I have my doubts. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. Defensive aggression is when you need to hold the position just long enough to complete an objective before moving on. If aggressive defense is intended to put a hurting on the bots, defensive aggression is meant to hold out long enough for you to make an escape. Here, I spot an absolute mess of clankers that are about to make their way towards us. And since I have good sight lines but no real cover, I'll call down Vera to hold the line while we wait for the objective to complete. Now, I didn't really need to engage these patrols at this distance, but y'all should know by now I will never miss an excuse to put more clankers into the trash compactor of freedom. Still, my aggressive nature does get in the way sometimes, and as I leap from my position to throw my hatred at the enemy, I trip and drop a gas track on myself. This snaps me out of my battle fervor and I start looking for a chance to move. While I wait, I take shots at the enemy, but I'm really just looking for my team to start moving so I can follow. I lost the initiative with my zeal, so I'm going to switch mindsets to start following my team and reacting to what they choose to do rather than making those calls myself. Thankfully, one of them throws down a smoke and we're able to make our escape to the primary objective. This all leads nicely to our final tip. But first, if you'd like to support my goal of getting off this five-year old gaming laptop so I can finally stream games while I'm recording, consider buying me a coffee. I'm adding a bunch of bonus gameplay commentaries for your view and pleasure along with some other benefits for supporters, so check it out if you feel so inclined. Number 5 lead or follow. I think this is where most Helldivers get tripped up when it comes to playing as a team with random players. The bottom line is this, if you want cohesive team play and quick play lobbies, you'll need to be able to switch between leading and following based on what's happening in the moment. If you run into a situation with too many leaders, the team breaks apart and it's every Helldiver for themselves. If no one steps up to lead because everyone's trying to follow the cues of someone else, then you'll get stuck grinding away your reinforcement budget on endless fights. Striking the right balance of leading and following is key to a successful team mission. You also can't have an ego when you step up into the leadership role. Use your body language to signal to the team what it is you want to accomplish. If they're receptive to it and start moving towards your position, you're now in the leadership role. If instead they ignore you and move towards something else, then it's your job to follow them and figure it out what it is they want to accomplish. From there, you can try to signal to your objective again. With their needs met, usually Helldivers are more willing to follow someone else's plan, since very few people will plan out an entire mission and have the focus to stay on task. Which is why we pump copious amounts of military grade Ritalin into every Helldiver's Hellpod to hopefully keep our troops on task long enough to complete the mission. You'll have plenty of chances to lead in any given mission. Maybe you lead the charge on a super base, or maybe you plant the flag of Super Earth and dare the clankers to try to take it. Either way, you will get a chance to have backup from your team once you've shown them that you're also willing to follow. From my experience, most Helldivers will gravitate towards big fights and big objectives, with some wanting to hit up points of interest for samples and others just want to spill oil. When you're in a game, it helps so much to figure out what your teammates want in that moment and make a call based on what you observe. If a Helldiver's gone mad with bloodlust, it's okay to leave them to it while you crack on with the objective. 
Either they'll survive and provide an excellent distraction, or they'll die and you can reinforce them back at your position. Whatever your team decides to do, you can always play around it. So there you have it, my top five tips for working together as a team while fighting the bots. If any of these was news to you, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear how y'all will apply these ideas in your games. But until next time, this is Commissar Kai, signing out.